Hey everybody, um, so uh, I'm uh, still working on this uh, modular um, like sci-fi kind of scenery system. Um, I, um, you know, I, I wanted to do some uh, floor tile kind of pieces, like modular kind of floor tiles where um, like I could use them uh, in a game where just sort of like plop them down on a game mat and then move minis around on them and it's like sort of like the walls are like implied where you draw like where the walls are exactly and then you but you move around like on the um on the tiles and uh i um so i have like a prototype piece i already see some things that i want to change with my design but like this is how i prototype things um, and, uh, it seems like you guys really like the, um, you're interested in, like, the design and, um, like, uh, kind of, like, what, how, how my process works to, like, design stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, getting kind of, getting back to our roots on the channel, like, doing more design. Um, I, uh, I did find a really great program, um, so when I, uh, when I went to art school, I, um, I learned how to use, um, Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator and like, well, just the whole Adobe suite. And, um, they went to a subscription model where they just charge you, it's like $30 a month or something ridiculous to use their, their programs for design stuff. So I've been looking for good programs to kind of like cut the cord, you know, with them. And I found a really great program. Um, I found a, um, a, a, it's called Affinity. Yeah, Affinity Designer. And um, it's, uh, it's the perfect thing to just cut the cord with, uh, with Adobe as far as like a, something that would work as an Illustrator program. So um, yeah, to do, to do laser or, or even to do like vinyl cutting. Um, stuff like that, or, you know, if you're designing, I don't know, like stickers or, or whatever, you want a good, um, a vector design program instead of a raster design. Like Photoshop is more, is, a, is more of like a, is a raster type program where you have to convert things into a raster graphic and then you have pixels. And, and then that's like, if you blow something up or shrink it down, then it changes the amount of the, sort of the, the resolution. And then a raster program is where you have um, angles. And then you have, you know, like you, when you design things, you have um, like, uh, it sort of, it sort of measures um, like curves and angles and, and you have like a design that can be blown up or shrunk or, or put into a laser or put into like a vinyl cutter or something like that. And, uh, and so I'm, I found a great program to do that. So, um, yeah, just know that actually everything that I designed this time, like I have been using a lot of Tinkercad, um, before, but the problem with Tinkercad too, is that it's, you can't really cut the cord with them either. It's a free program, you know, but it's, it's browser based and it's a cloud program. So you can't really download, like you can download your finished laser cut kind of designs, but as far as like the, the raw format, it you know, it's, it's in their cloud. You can't, you can't download some kind of editable thing that you can plug into another, you know, CAD program. So, uh, so yeah, I might, I might be looking for something where I can cut, kind of cut the cord with them and then have some files. Cause I'm, I'm trying to sort of build out a library of like, uh, you know, pieces that I can use to do design with and then build out, you know, build out that library and then have a whole bunch of pieces that I can just sort of snap together like, uh, like Legos to, to make uh, bigger things. But, um, yeah, so, uh, that you guys might like to have a look at some of how my uh, design process works, like fail, uh, learn something, repeat, uh, fail, learn something, repeat, and, uh, you know, prototype. But, uh, but yeah, let's, uh, let's make some, uh, uh, sci-fi stuff.
So I, uh, I wanted to make some uh, like modular kind of catwalk, like floor grate things, like uh, for, you know, just random stuff. Like if it's a, like a raised kind of catwalk, like an industrial complex or inside of a spaceship or whatever. Um, so I was trying to figure out what to use for, um, I have these like these screens. This is, um, this stuff, when I got it, I didn't know what it was. I think it's steel because it's like really, really tough. Um, <laughs> it's like super, super tough to cut. Um, so yeah, that that's kind of out as an option. Um, so yeah, I got these off of Amazon. I mean, I might still use them for something, but it's pretty tough to cut. Um, and then the other option that I had, uh, well, a couple other options. So I had these, this is um, uh, this uh, wire mesh stuff. Um, it's, um, this is like, this was what I was going to go with. Um, it's a little bit closer to scale, or I'm sorry, this is the best, probably the most to scale, but it's, it's really, really difficult to work with. You can see I've got a, like a 30 kind of heroic scale mini right here. And then you can see that like, it's like his foot would go through there, you know, it doesn't, I mean, it still reads just fine, like looking at it, but, um, this is a lot more to scale. It looks a little, it looks better. Um, so, but this stuff is, um, this is aluminum. And then this is, um, uh, stuff. It's, uh, like, uh, sculpting mesh for, like, doing, like, paper mache and, uh, um, like, for sculpting on. Um, you can get this stuff at, like, Hobby Lobby or Michaels or wherever. Uh, and then it's, um, it's, it's a lot, way, way easier to work with. Um, like I can, uh, it, it, I think it's aluminum because it just, you know, it cuts just fine. Um, so yeah, I mean, way, way easier to work with, right? And then um, the, the other option that I had was this, um, this fabric stuff, this like muslin, um, kind of hard to even see on camera, but it is like a, a, a mesh, but it's, um, it's very, very, you know, it's very, very fine. It's hard to see. And then it's really hard to work with too. <laughs> um, so that's, that's out too, right? So I was gonna go with this, um, and you know none of this stuff is expensive. Um, so, but I, I put a few few dollars into it at this point. I mean, a lot of this stuff I just had because I picked it up. So I'm a pack rat, you know, magpie just grab things and keep them in my art studio. But okay, so this is what I found. This is the thing that's the game changer. So what this is is. Um, this is a screen, uh, like window screen uh, repair tape. So this is um, a fiberglass. And then it has one sticky side. So I haven't used it yet, but I have very, very high hopes. Um, like, I'm excited. So this this stuff has one sticky side to it, right? So what I can do is I can even, I think I can even cut the stuff down to size like a sticker. Um, I have a little paper cutter thing here. Um, this is a pretty handy tool to have. Just cuts little straight red angles. 
Um, so I think I can just, let's see. Yeah, that works like a dream. Uh, let's see, these are an inch. So, I'll just give it, I'll give it a little bit of um, clearance on either side. And it's, these are like four inch wide. And then it's like s several feet long like 10 feet long or something like that. And it was like $10 on Amazon. Uh, so, could be a game changer, we'll see. Let's see how, how hard it is to get this backing off. Oh, okay, I see. So it's this, um, it only has certain areas that are sticky. Um, like this, this is like a double-sided tape right here. So it's, I could use, hmm, I could like stick it down, right? Line it up. Just use that tacky part to kind of stick it down, line it up, and then use some super glue. Like I can pull it taut like that, right? Use a little bit of super glue. Maybe even a little bit of activator. Yeah, a lot, a lot of activator. Okay, yeah, total game changer. I mean, I know this looks tedious, but it's nowhere near as tedious as working with metal. But um, another thing that I wanted to try was I wanted to try melting it with um, sprue goo. Uh, so I have like styrene, I have some, some uh, styrene um, cutoffs to use. Um, let's see how that reads. Somebody is standing on this stuff. Yeah, that's pretty perfect. That's exactly what I was going for, for a nice. And then like what I wanted to do too was have like a, some kind of a grid system set up under it. So that like, say that we're playing, you know, and then we have our room set up and then I can just have my uh, like room and then people can see under, you know, and like just kind of count out. Because I plan on using these for like Alien RPG and like Stargrave and whatever else. Um, let's see. Just go ahead and glue this guy down while I'm messing with it. And then, so I've got, um, 
And, and I got, I found these, these are super cool. Um, this is a um, uh, diamond plate, uh, a little hard to see. Diamond plate um, styrene. And then I cut it with the laser to make it look like little, um, uh, you know, like little squares of, um, of uh, industrial, you know, platform or whatever. So I'm gonna make, um, I think I wanna make these for more of like a, like a room, you know, and then maybe have some of this grating stuff like going around the side. That's kind of what I was picturing. And then maybe having like hallways that are made out of this stuff. Um, so, but anyways, let me see. What I wanted to try, um, use some of this scrap styrene. Let's see, where's this? The, I mean, this is like acetate or something on this side. So if I really wanted to, I could just melt that onto something if it was only with the like the texture that I was going for or something um let me try this oh. See if I can sandwich it between two pieces of styrene, because I can just make um, uh, I can cut these with, out of styrene. This is my thick, heavy-duty sprue glue. Um, put them together on top. So. And just sandwich two pieces of styrene together like that. It's very thin. Like I just got it this morning. It just showed up from Amazon, so I haven't even really measured it yet. Let's see. What are we working with here? Yeah, definitely super, super thin. Just paper thin. So it super glues up just fine. Um, but how does it, how does sprue goo melt? Okay. All right, so I, uh, I did a, a test piece. Um, I, uh, I cut down, so these are one millimeter styrene, and then these are half millimeter styrene. Um, <clears throat> so I did a little test piece. Um, and then I was trying to, so I glued it up using sprue goo. And this is a solid piece of plastic. Um, so yeah, I just decided I'm gonna do a styrene project because I, I love working with styrene, but um, but these are the ones, I still really like this look. It has a really cool look. And like, I wouldn't be mad even if this didn't take paint very well, I could just leave it kind of metal and then do some weathering stuff on it. But I mean, of course, the styrene and MDF just soak up paint, like they, they love to be painted. This, um, <clears throat> this is really nice to work with though. So, and it's definitely like more to scale. Um, but I tried to, for some reason, I thought that this, um, this stuff, I thought that this part, the adhesive part would melt if, um, if I hit it with a hair dryer, I think, or a heat gun. Like, I think that I read that somewhere and then, but it's not the stuff that I bought. It, um, this does come off. It's just like double-sided tape. 
but it doesn't melt when you hit it with the heat gun or whatever. So I did, um, yeah, I've got my, my test piece done and I just decided I'm going to make a bunch of these and then I'm going to make a structure later, like make catwalk things out of them. And then, um, but for this, what I want to do is, um, I'm going to make some like little, just uh, floor tile kind of things where, um, they, uh, they just, um, they can sit inside of like inserts. Is that right? Yeah, there we go. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just marking kind of where my, uh, my little grid is because I, this is um, uh, four inches wide, six inches wide. And uh, and then I'm gonna lay these little things down. This is just styrene again. It's a, just a different. This is um, uh, plastruct. There's styrene, and then this is um, actually. So this stuff is JTT. Um, where's that? I will show you. I will show you what I'm working with. So, so this is, um, it's uh, 3D embossed, um, O scale, um, diamond plate sheets. So this stuff is it's pretty cheap. It's, uh, well, yeah, seven bucks for two big sheets of it. Um, but it's, it has a really cool texture. And then I've just got my, you know, cheapo styrene um, bits. Evergreen is great stuff. Okay, so keep going. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm gonna lay these down in the center and then I'm gonna put these around on the, the sides, All right? And then um, I'm gonna have I'm gonna do something later to have like some little columns on the sides. <clears throat> I decided. So work that grid out. Yeah, I'm just gonna use the, I cut down some, some pieces of this stuff, the window screen mesh stuff. And then, you know, the tape is really starting to grow on me. Like the, having the one adhesive side to just kind of get it into place. <clears throat> and these these little strips are the, the roll, the roll of tape is, um, okay, it just came off, but that's fine. Um, I'm just gonna put just a little dot of super glue down, just to kind of hold it in place. But these, so these little strips there, the, they come off the tape roll in like four inches, four inch pieces. But it's thin enough, you know, to where I can just, um, uh, whoa, actually, I'm gonna move that over. It's thin enough to where I can just um, glue the, the pieces of styrene and then um, <clears throat> it'll sort of soak through with um, sprue goo. 
or um, plastic cement. Much better. All right, <laughs> um, this one, I feel like this one fought me a lot more than usual, more than I'm used to, but um, this is like one solid piece of plastic. Um, so I think, I, I think we're ready for painting. <laughs> um, even to make it even more solid, I think I'm gonna hit it with some spray paint that has a little bit of um, um, acetone in it. Just to kind of melt everything together, just that little last bit. Uh, there's no like gap filling or anything like that, but I'm just gonna make this like one solid piece of plastic. Kind of a huge pain. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to come, I'm gonna have to work with the design a little bit. Um, I'm gonna keep these, I'm gonna make like catwalk platforms out of them. And then um, I'm gonna hit this with some spray paint. Um, but what I'm thinking I might do is, um, might just uh, do like a cutout like this. Like this is just cereal box, but I did a test piece. 
I might just do like a cutout like this that goes over the top. And then um, like just, just drop these in because I know that this section is exactly like four by four inches on the inside and see how much easier that makes things. Um, I might try an NDF version too, like with the um, cereal box, like this kind of thickness of stuff, because um, this is just chipboard, like I could get a hold of this stuff. If I wanted to do like a commercial kind of, you know, a, an MDF design, that would be a lot, probably a lot better to cut in the laser cutter because I wouldn't be breathing pl burnt plastic. Um, but anyways, yeah, I, uh, I dig it. I think it's a really cool looking design. Time for spray paint. All right, so I uh, I hit this guy with some uh, spray paint outside, and um, mm, there's some issues. Uh, it, it I don't know what happened. Like some areas kind of like delaminated a little bit. I don't know if those were like totally glued up in the first place, but this um, this stuff kind of like bubbled up, you know, in some areas. And then it it uh, it kind of doesn't want to lay flat, so it just kind of like um, it pulled on itself a little bit, so it has this bow to it. Um, it's very slight, you know. It's still totally usable, but what I'm thinking is I'm gonna just do this rim piece as one solid piece, and then do it out of more uh, one millimeter styrene and have the bottom be one solid piece and then just have these little inserts go in the middle. So um, like I'll show you, I'll show you what I, what I um, I've been working with this stuff and then um, the, so far this has been the best way. Um, so I have my little half millimeter piece of styrene and then I have my one millimeter piece of styrene and then I have my uh, little piece of uh, window screen sort of cut down to size. And then this is the best way that I've found to do this so far. I haven't really found a good way to take advantage of the tape yet because it just, it doesn't dissolve like it, like I thought it did. So I'm just not gonna, just not gonna use it. Um, but it's still more convenient to have like this, you know, this roll of tape, like in a drawer, than having a, 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 a big, like 36 by, you know, whatever, like four feet by three feet window screen lying around somewhere. So I take that, right? And then I take the, um, the thick goopy stuff. Where's my uh, extra thick? Oh, there we go. All right, so I take my th uh, thick uh, sprue glue, right? And this is just uh, to me extra thin cement. And then it has um, sprue melted in it. So it's kind of like the thick stuff. And then I put a, like a thick, whoops, not that thick, a thick goopy layer down, right? Um, and what this does is it kind of melts the, uh, the plastic a little bit. Um, there's like acetone is the main ingredient in here. So the screen, the, the, the screen stuff is actually fiberglass. So it doesn't, it's not affected by this stuff. Um, but the, um, the little bits of styrene just sort of melt into one solid piece of plastic that sort of melts around this stuff, but it is sticky. Like it has enough, um, tack to it that, like that, I can just pop it in there and then this stuff sort of seeps through 
like so. And then it, uh, it kind of self levels in between there. And then this will cure as one solid hunk of plastic. And then it, you know, most of these have just stayed pretty flat, but they, again, they kind of want to curl in on themselves a little bit, but it's, it's okay. So, so yeah, like that's, but that's one of the cool things about working with styrene is that you can just sort of melt it together and make one solid chunk of plastic with like a, um, a plastic glue, a plastic cement glue. And then like, it's even, even if I wanted to, I could take, um, I could take like a gluing tray and then I could, I could put magnets on top of it. There's other crap in one right now. It's drying, but, um, like I, I could keep it super flat while it cures. Um, but anyways, I want to paint this guy. I want to see how this guy looks painted. So I'm going to let this stuff cure and set those off to the side. And I want to paint this thing. Okay. So what I was, what I want to do is uh, I want to do, I'm going to do some hairspray chipping. Uh, this is just one of my favorite like weathering techniques. So I don't want it to look like super, super rusty. Um, but I do want to make it look like there's some paint that's just like peeling off the top of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit it with some hairspray. And then this is just like Tresemme. And um, you don't want the like really, really strong stuff like the extra, extra hold. You just want like the regular kind. And then you put like a thin layer on. Not too much. And then when that dries, um, it creates a layer of paint in between that you can melt with like, if you scrub on it with like a toothbrush or something. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry. Okay, the, um, the color I think I'm gonna use is this uh, Vallejo green, green gray. Um, I think it's gonna be like kind of a nice contrast sort of give like that lived in spaceship look. I don't want rust, so I don't want it, I want it to look like there's not enough like moisture and oxygen like inside the spaceship or whatever this is, you know, for there to be a lot of rust. So, um, but I do want it to have that kind of like lived in look. Uh, so, just gonna mix that up a little bit. It's a little too thick to go through the airbrush just as is. It needs to be thinned down a little. About like milk kind of consistency. And this is just airbrush thinner. It's my own recipe. It's mostly just rubbing alcohol and uh, distilled water. All right, so. So you can see like, I don't have very good coverage. In fact, it's even like kind of running into the cracks here, which is just fine because like, I don't want, uh, like I'm, I'm just gonna kind of weather it in any ways and like take some of that stuff off the, I'll go for a dry part. <laughs> um, but I just wanna kind of take some of that stuff off of the, the top. Um, 
which is the most dry. This is just kind of thin, like thin layers over here. Um, so if I let the paint kind of like that area kind of dissolve a little bit, the, um, the, uh, um, the hairspray or the water kind of dissolves some of the hairspray, then, um, then I can, uh, get some kind of cool looking, um, weathering effects. And I'm not even really worried about it too much. Just let it do whatever it wants. Cause you know, weathering, it should be kind of random in like traffic areas. I just want it to look like it was painted at one point and then people walked on it. even take like a, a toothpick and like do some little scratches in there and stuff to make it look like stuff has been kind of like moved around on there chipped out the paint And it sells the effect a little bit. Okay, so now um, I don't want it to look really rusty. I want it to look dirty. So I'm just gonna use some of these pigments and then this is just, um, these are uh, pan pastels. So it's just like pastel pigments in a, you know, in a little tin, like it's kind of like makeup. And then this is actually a makeup brush. <laughs> so um, I'm just gonna kind of put some of that stuff on there. Try not to rub off too much of the, um, the paint job. Oh, it's just like melting. That's fine. That layer of paint was so thin. So yeah, I don't want it to look uh, rusty, just kind of dirty, dingy. But that works. I mean, I can just kind of dab on some of that, that pigment to make things look uh, lived in. Yeah, I think that's the look I'm going for, it's lived in. So I was just playing around with these. Um, <laughs> Uh, I really like the, uh, the little diamond plate stuff. Um, get a little closer. Can I see what's going on? <laughs> um, so I do really like these great pieces, but I think that they, they don't look like they're meant to be walked on. Um, so I'm thinking I might just make some kind of like little corridor system with the little like pieces of diamond plate uh, and have this stuff be on like the sides or something and make some more room tiles like this and like little walkways and stuff. The other day we were playing Alien RPG and I was just thinking about how cool it would be if we'd had these done or, uh, for our game. 
But, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna keep working on this stuff. So anyways, uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.